It has been a loud 3D summer at the multiplex. And while I'm perfectly receptive to the odd $150 million superhero picture, it wasn't so odd. It was the norm. And I'm ready for movies that aren't in your face with a surcharge for the glasses. The comedy Our Idiot Brother won't win any prizes, but its mellow vibe is a blessed relief. Who's the man? You are? Paul Rudd plays Ned, a friendly, go-along-to-get-along screw-up of a brother, to three high-strung sisters, played by three appealing actresses, Emily Mortimer, Elizabeth Banks, and Zoe Deschanel. Ned goes to prison after a cop in uniform approaches him to buy dope. Really, see for yourself. Listen, Ned, you wouldn't happen to know where I can get some, uh... <laughs> Even if I did, do you really think I'd tell you? It's been a hard week. Yeah? Yeah. Here you go, officer. Hey, thanks, man. Wow. You're under arrest. No, no, st stop the clip. It, it, it's too painful. Anyway, when Ned gets out of jail, he visits his sisters and messes up their lives by being too guilelessly honest. He said that your personality gets in the way of your looks, your very good looks. Dude, do you have Tourette's? But, this being a comedy, family ties strengthen rather than strangle. The uplift would be hard to buy if Rudd weren't so lovable. I have no idea what he's like in life, but I'd be stricken to hear he's a jerk. It would be such an affront to the notion we can see through a performance into an actor's core. His radiant niceness amid all the neurosis gives this shambling comedy a measure of grace. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And speaking of grace, that's the holy grail for Vera Farmiga's Corinne, the heroine of Higher Ground, which is also Farmiga's amazingly graceful directorial debut. It's based on a memoir by Carolyn Briggs about her life as a religious fundamentalist and how she finally fled the male-dominated hierarchy. But it's not primarily an attack on religion. Formica's touch is gentle and deeply sympathetic. The scenes in which she's baptized and inducted into this faith-based community are rapturous. It's the 70s, and this church is full of scruffy folk music types who believe the Lord writes his gospel also in rocks and trees. She finds transcendence, and of course, she comes crashing to earth, but not without a fight to stay aloft. When her friend speaks in tongues, she's full of envy. What was that? I thought it was so beautiful. It's a prayer language. I want it. Come on, Lord. Come on, Holy Spirit. She replays Robert De Niro's You Talking to Me as Please Talk to Me, while her druggy secular sister listens in. Yes, the doctrinaire fundamentalists are insufferable, but Corinne doesn't slam the door. She's not self-righteous. She actually admires their faith. And after a bummer summer, Formiga's debut has restored mine in the transcendent power of movies.